So last week, I was in North Carolina, which I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's like a different state. <laughs> <laughs> Took me 20 hours to get there. Um, I could have been in the Philippines in the same amount of time, but that's, that's a Westfall travel issue. So, uh, but um, anyway, I just want to let you know, it was a great time uh, speaking to a group of, uh, of men who gathered around uh, golfing. And so they played golf all day, and then I'd speak in the evening, and then they would eat huge amounts of fried food. <laughs> a perfect world! <laughs> Unbelievable. And so, um, yeah. Uh, now, I, I need to, they told me I had to tell you one thing so that you would understand uh, their world, okay? So, forgive me in advance. Um, we're sitting in this restaurant. Uh, all you can eat crab legs and everything else. And, um, and the guy across from me uh, says, West Coast, the Left Coast Johnny? Left Coast Johnny? Left Coast. Left Coast. Uh, what does my lemon pie, what does this lemon pie that I have here have in common with my finger? <laughs> and I went, you know, I really don't know. Meringue! The pie has meringue and my finger has meringue. <laughs> now, I just want you to know, I thought about that for about an hour. <laughs> and then, and then I laughed, but it was too late. <laughs> it was totally too late. It took me so long. Anyway, so that's what I dealt with. They didn't understand a word I said, but they were kind. <laughs> There was one guy, uh, I won't say his name because he may be watching the video, but uh, I got about 20% of what he said. That was about it. He'd say stuff, and then the others would say, oh yeah, that's, that's like what John was saying last night in the talk. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, no understanding. Anyway, okay, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but so now it does. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we've been looking at harbor values. What are the values, the, the root of the church, uh, all through the summer? And we've looked at different things. And today, um, uh, my issue that, that I've been assigned by the team is to talk about that at the heart of who we are, uh, we are wounded healers. Wounded healers. And, uh, and so uh, that's what we're going to look at today. And... Um, Basically, what this means is that the ministry that we do does not happen after we've gotten everything together. It, it, we don't wait for that. We don't wait for our own healing before we, we engage in, in, with other people and in ministry. But it emerges actually out of our own brokenness. So at the very places that we're wounded or broken, that may be the place that God wants to focus on and have be the, um, uh, the, the pivot that launches us into ministry. That's the, the contact point. And, and I gotta tell you, this is a different, uh, a different value than, than I grew up with in church, uh, in a lot of churches I've been in, where uh, you're ready for ministry as soon as you've got it all together. And, um, and if there's problems, well, work those out, and then God can use you. Which makes sense, right? In, a, in an unbiblical way. Uh, you know. And um, I remember when I was down in California, uh, we, we had new members classes, and uh, one of the associates, who will go nameless, um, led these classes. He'd let me in one week out of the seven to share about tithing. And then uh, he'd share. So, there was a couple, they were about 91 years old, and they came to see me, and, um, and uh, I said, you know, what, what, you know, they were, they'd gone through the new members class, and they were about to join the church that Sunday, and so they made an appointment and came to see me, and I said, oh, you know, how's it going? They said, well, we got a call from the associate pastor last night, and I thought, oh, this is exciting. Maybe they want us to facilitate the next new members class being group leaders. But um, uh, 
they called to say that because we have some things going on in our life that uh, it would be better if we don't join the church. And I thought, well, it would be better if you don't join the church if you have problems in your life. I thought that's why we were here, you know, and, and so we had, there was a parting of the ways with that associate pastor eventually, and, um, and I stayed, but um, it, it was like, how do you get an idea that, that the church is the place where all the perfect people gather? Um, I know that's not true because I'm looking out at it, y'all, <laughs> you know, I'm looking out at it, all y'all, <laughs> North Carolina, you know, so... Uh, but, um, so, the, um, many of you have read uh, Henry Nouwen, a Dutch uh, Catholic uh, writer, and he had a book called Wounded Healers that was sort of introduced this idea to Christendom, but it actually was based on, um, on the, the work of Carl Jung, who was a psychoanalysis person, and he had identified the wounded healer, this is your little talk in psychology now, the, uh, the wounded healer is an archetype of uh, people and a certain archetype and it's uh, the one who who assists and helps others while their own life is dis disintegrating around them basically and and he said that the psychoanalyst needs to be a wounded healer that if they're not in touch with their own problems their own issues then they can't identify and relate and be of any good to their to their clients right so that that was the psychological thing now now let me shift it in the and in the for those of you who, who don't study textbooks and, and read psychology today then remember house the tv series the doctor he, he's an english guy but he talks with no accent just <laughs> shocking and and he has he has a truckload of problems physically he's deteriorating he's addicted he has crankiness issues he's mean to everybody he just says stuff and he's a brilliant genius who can diagnose right it, 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 no one's ever seen House? You, the, and admit it? Okay, you're good, okay. So you know what I'm talking about. He is the archetype that Carl Jung was talking about of the wounded healer. He is almost motivated to, to fix people's problems while his own life is disintegrating. And that's been the whole premise of that show, the, the wounded healer. So I think, well, is this psychological or is this television? What is it? Well, guess what? Way before Carl Jung, way before House, if you can imagine a world before House. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 53. This actually comes out of the Bible. Talking about the Messiah that's going to come. Talking about what we now from this side know as Jesus. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by people, a, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering like one from whom men hide their faces. It's turn away. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And get this. And by his wounds, we are what? Yeah. We are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What a powerful description of the Messiah. What a, a description of Jesus. What a description of, uh, of the wounded healer's ministry. He was um, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. 
Now, this tells me that um, from the very beginning, God intended us to be people who didn't uh, conceal or hide or pretend about our brokenness and about our woundedness. Um, in fact, Jesus models kind of shrugging at our suffering. He, he, I don't know if he was comfortable with it, but uh, he was engaged with us, and that makes a huge difference. Now, this idea that by his suffering we are healed, um, His sacrifice brought us peace. That, there's an incredible um, lifting in this, and, um, and God's presence and his power coming alongside us and taking our sorrows so that we don't have to carry them. But then, um, in John 20, what, what does Jesus say? As the Father has sent me, so I send you, right? I send you out. So what does that mean for us? Maybe it means that we go out in the same way Jesus did into our world as wounded healers. That, that, that we're aware of our own issues, we're aware of our wounding, and, and we're not dwelling on it, but we're using it as a way to come alongside people to recognize uh, the reality of their situation and to be lifters of their sorrows. That is profound. That is powerful. Um, And I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's hard to be compassionate. Um, let me tell you about that. Uh, being loving is not an easy thing for me. You know, it's something I have to work at, you know, um, intentionally and willfully. Um, and uh, it's hard to be compassionate because in order to be compassionate, we have to go where people are vulnerable. And we have to go where people are broken and where life is not working for them. And, and we have to, to go where people are lonely and, and, and where there's not peace, uh, there's dis-ease, and, and, and we have to go there in order to be compassionate. Well, I want to be compassionate with the people who have it all together. Wouldn't that be nicer? You know? <laughs> I used to be paid a lot of money to, to be chaplain to the people who had it all together, you know? All I had to learn was when to kiss someone's rear end and when to kick it, and you can't get that wrong. You have to, you, you have to make sure that you get the right, the right one there. Um, I, I, trust me on that. And uh, I've sometimes made a mistake. But I want you to know that in my healing, <laughs> coming here to the harbor, the Lord, like a surgeon, has removed my lips from anybody's rear end. And so I'm, I'm a free man, you know. That's just the, the way it is now. I will strike that from the videotape. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that showing up on YouTube. But it is hard to be compassionate. And one of the things that we want to do, at least in my own life, what I want to do, I want to do away with the suffering. Fix it, you know. Just it's, it's get this thing taken care of, and then we don't have to deal with it. And uh, and and or let's just get in the car and leave it. Let's go, you know. Let's just go away and get away get away from this. And uh, or if we could just find a quick cure, wouldn't that be nice? You know, if we could have a little workshop or something with the three steps to solving everything wouldn't that be great <laughs> let's do it <laughs> oh man I, I I've sat through so many sermons with three steps to being great and uh, they still haven't worked I think I need that fourth step in there you know because I'm just too complicated but the, but the thing is that's what I want to and, and because of that it's really difficult to be compassionate because compassion means you don't run away and you don't just fix it, and you don't try and find a quick solution so you don't have to deal with it. Actually, compassion comes from just being there and saying, okay, we're here. 
I love you regardless. We're here because that's what Jesus does with us. I'm with you always. That's the ministry. I'm with you. Well, yeah, but Lord, could you do a quick fix on this? Well, I'm here. Well, Lord, could you, you know, solve that real nice? Maybe clean solving. I'm here. Well, I know you're here, but could you just fix it so I don't have to deal with it? I'm here with you, John. Is that enough? That's where compassion comes in. And, uh, and, and the Bible says his compassions never fail us. They're new every morning. They're new every morning. That means his presence is there every morning. I was, uh, uh, got a call this week, um, went up to Whidbey Island for uh, lunch with a couple of dear friends, and um, uh, they were, had been missionaries in Brazil, and then missionaries in Guatemala, and now he's one of the honchos for um, Latin American missions, well he's getting his doctorate in missions or something, and he was our missions pastor in California, and his wife. And we, and we were at a pizza parlor in Edmonds, right off the ferry boat there. It looks out on the water. It's really nice. And we're sitting there eating our lunch, talking. And this lady, kind of boldly, really, walks up to the table. I, at first, I thought she recognized me. <laughs> you know, maybe she saw my picture on a book and wanted an autograph, you know? And I got my pen out as I was she was coming towards the table just in case she walks right up to Lois and says what a beautiful scarf that is that is such a beautiful scarf I noticed it from across the room and your hair I love the the short uh, short cut of your hair that's so cute and you have such beautiful eyes and then she turned and walked walked away And I went, okay, with the island people are a little strange. Okay, let's go. What was that about? And Lois said, oh, it's the Society of Breast Cancer Survivors. We see each other across the room. And when we do, we want to go and encourage. Because we know what the other person's going through. That's what it is. Oh, <laughs> the Society of Breast Cancer Survivors. That short haircut is so cute. Thank you. I think that that is a powerful picture for us as a church. We should be able, because of our brokenness, because of our wounds, of which, you know, across this room, we've got a lot of different ones, you know? We don't all have the same wounds. We have a lot of different ones. But because of that, we should be able to, to sniff out people who are struggling right now and need a word of encouragement, who need to hear that short haircut is really beautiful. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad you're you. Can you imagine the powerful ministry that, that comes out of a place that's rooted in being wounded healers? Instead, why would we hide it? We go, oh, no one will know. No one will know. And therefore, no one will ever be helped. No one can be encouraged because we're the society of keep it all togethers. That's a lonely society. Um, I want to read this from Henry Nowen. Actually, I'm not reading this from Henry Nowen's book on um, wounded healers. I thought that would be too simple. So this is from his book on the road to daybreak. He actually was a man, my, my theory, Henry Nowen was a man who had no unpublished thoughts. <laughs> if he thought it, there's a book somewhere, you know. Might be a small book, but it was, anyway, this is what he says. When we honestly ask ourselves, 
Which person in our lives mean the most to us? We often find that it is those who, instead of giving advice, solutions, or cures, have chosen rather to share our pain and touch our wounds with a warm and tender hand. A friend who can be silent with us in a moment of despair or confusion, who can stay with us in an hour of grief and bereavement, who can tolerate not knowing, not curing, not healing, and face the reality of our powerlessness, that is a friend who cares. Get that? That's what I think God wants us to be to each other. Uh, in Philippians 2, it says, have the mind of Christ in you. Who didn't consider being equal with God as something to be grasped and held onto, but he gave it up and became a servant to all. Um, I think it's time for us to loosen our grip a little bit. Loosen our grip on our need to fix people, on our need to solve stuff, on our need to hide away protect ourselves, loosen our grip and say, Lord, as you're present with me, let me be present with them. And may that be enough by your grace. That's God's word for us today. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence, your abiding presence. We thank you that you did take our sorrows, you lifted those, and you took our sins, and you took our brokenness, and you carried that for us. Now give us the courage to, to be your wounded healers, wherever we go, in this church, at school, at work, at home, wherever we are. We belong to you, in Jesus' name. Amen.